Okay, so I'm going to try to quickly go through the uh, combo graph plugin setup that I have. Um, this is for a game I'm working on called The Chosen Few. Hopefully it comes out soon. Um, so yeah, this is a bit of the the system like in, in as it is, you know, attack and uh, have charge attacks and stuff like that. Um, and the charge attacks can also be cut short. And I'll show you how to do that. All right. So first, have an enhanced set in, yeah, enhanced input setup. Um, this is, should be called light attack uh, or something along those lines, but it's just um, yeah, poorly named. Anyway, uh, so I have left mouse button, right shoulder, pretty standard. Uh, heavy attacks. So this is kind of similar to like I want to say with the Dark Soul setup. Uh, and then you have your charge attack being a held heavy. So um, I'll show, show how that's done, uh, but you essentially just want to set it up to hold instead because they have to be mutually exclusive. Uh, and the next part of it is you want to go to your player controller and set up a uh, melee attack to, I'm using game playability system, keep in mind, um, but melee attack is just checking, uh, a cheap way of checking uh, is valid if you have a possessed pawn and then on the other side sends out a gameplay event to that actor that is your corresponding attack. Easy. Okay, the last part of it, uh, or not the last part, or second last part of it, um, is you have your gameplay ability itself. And you can't see it down here, but it says event ability melee charged attack or whatever, charged combo. Um, it's just because my stupid head's in the way. Uh, so there's that, and then these are the ability triggers. Uh, so those get triggered by those events that get sent to your actor. Other than that, it's just you have, you know, melee ability tags, pretty standard, and don't equip while you're attacking, because that's weird. Uh, unless you're set up, maybe your game has that and you have animations for that and then go hard, but I don't, so. Uh, <laughs> you have activate ability by event, and then that breaks into gameplay data, which we'll use here in a second. Um, I'm using one other plugin that is of note, which is the gameplay tag select, I believe that's what it's called. It's magical, and uh, you should definitely, definitely purchase this one. You can use it for all sorts of stuff. It's particularly useful for uh, UI and things of that nature, and especially when you combine it with data assets, it is awesome. So um, I'll show a video on that later, but uh, right now we're just gonna focus on this. So we have our commit ability, then it goes to a branch, and if you, you know, fail that commit, it just goes to end ability. Everything just grounds out to that one, and I'm just lazy and do it like that. So um, make sure that you're not equipping, uh, and then gets the item in slot from AGR. I just, AGR is a, a great inventory system, especially if you uh, expand on it, it's wicked. So I just have that, it gets melee data from that, from a data asset that gets its grounded combos. Um, this way, whatever weapon I have in my hand, it just checks its data and then grabs that combo and then that's what it uses for its combo graphs. Um, if I was, is falling, blah, 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 I would have air combos as well. Um, and then this matches tag select just changes between your uh, event ability melee light combo, heavy attack, or heavy combo and charge attack. Um, and then that goes to that event tag. So this allows it to put the input into this start combo graph for ability task, which is awesome. Uh, asynchronous to that, it does a uncrouch because you don't want to be crouching necessarily when you're attacking with a grounded combo. Uh, again, if you had that, you'd probably put some sort of uh, branch logic in there as well to check if that's a thing. If you're crouched, then do this other attack uh, or other combo graph, I should say. Um, and then you have, I just have a weight gameplay uh, ability to deactivate and then pff, done. So that's the ability. Um, and then we go to the main meat of this, I should say, is the, uh, the graph itself, um, where it looks big and scary off the start, but it's just sort of a little easier to view. Um, the blue are blue R1s are light attacks, the red R2s are heavy attacks, and the greens are charge attacks. Um, yeah, so that one's coming right from the start. Uh, so anyway, uh, I have it on my particular combos um, so that you can switch between which combo you're using, like light and heavies, uh, but you can't progress backwards, obviously. 
and you can hit a number of five on the heavy combos and four on the light combos on this character in particular. Um, and then you have your charge attacks down here and you can use every attack can get to the charge attacks, even the last combo on mine, because I like it so that when you exit that last combo, if you go, you know, one, two, three, four, and then five, you can also come out of that into a charge and do that. And you can either cancel it or you can or cancel it there or you can attack early or like attack on time like I showed you and then that can change your damage through gameplay effect calculations um so yeah that's that's the kind of basic setup here that we got um these say that they have custom nodes they don't do anything right now i just set those up so that i could do stuff with them and i never ended up doing anything so uh ignore that um the other thing to note is that on the very first one here, I have attack on um, action triggered and wait for combo end. And then on this, these next frames of them, this is just so if you attack and don't do anything, it'll just kind of return to normal transition. Um, but if you attack again, then it's going to transition on a specific and, and notify frame and do uh, a combo trans or from the, it takes an, uh, sorry, a notify from the attack and then does a, a transition on that. So I'll really quickly show that in this. Uh, this is the animations. Um, so we have a rotate owner here so that when you attack in these first couple frames before the commit, I'll call it, um, you can choose to modify your rotation. And then I have the hit box through the hit frames. And then I have the recovery frames that have you clearing everything. And then as soon as the second foot steps down, it disables root motion so that you can keep running and it doesn't feel so sticky. Um, the other thing that I like to do is I cut up my animations into the anticipation, the hit frames and the recovery. Rarely I'll cut it up more than this, but it depends on the feel of it. And uh, the reason why is because then you get some control over the rate and not just the general rate of a single animation, but of all three. Um, it's particularly useful with the uh, play rate of the recoveries as a lot of the recoveries from, from default animators are like pretty long. And again, it makes your combos feel chunky on the recovery, so you don't want that. Um, and then aside from that, I just have the uh, attack event right there. I don't know what that one's doing. Footstep notify, clear hit actors, combo transition right there, and then another footstep. So that's kind of your, your principal setup for your uh, attacks. Um, and then what else do I have to go over? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Hmm. I hope not. This is the second time I've recorded this, but yeah, we're going to leave it at that. And, uh, hopefully that's everything. If not, then I'll try to post it in the comments. Um, yeah, hope everyone learned something.